Welcome to this video on how to knit a ballet dress. This ballet dress will fit on any of my painted Cricut animals. For this pattern you'll need yarn that's an equivalent weight as the yarn you used for your animal, straight knitting needles that are at least two sizes larger than the ones you use to knit your animal. This is because for the animals you need to knit with smaller needles so the stuffing doesn't show through, but for the clothes you want the stitches to be stretchy so you need the bigger needles. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and some way to keep track of which row you're working on. For this pattern, you'll need to know how to do stockinette and garter stitch, basic increases and decreases, and mattress stitch for the seam. You'll also use the knit or cable cast on for the armholes and a couple new stitches, one called butterfly stitch and another one called slip rib stitch. I'll show you how to do these when we get to them. They are used to create the ribbed or corseted top and the front lace panel. Even with the new stitches, overall this is a pretty quick pattern that has only one seam up the back, so there's not much sewing and not a lot of ends to weave in, especially if you keep the top and tutu in the same color. Just a few more things before I get to the pattern. Don't let my knitting style throw you off. Just knit and purl in the way that's most comfortable for you. Please like and share my videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click show more in the description area for links to more videos and information. Share photos of your completed project on my Facebook page. You can find a link for that in the description area too. And finally, if you'd like a written pattern, I've given links to the shops where I sell them in the description area as well. Okay, let's get started. We're going to start at the top with the straps and work down to the lace tutu. As we're working the top of the ballet dress, keep in mind that my style of knitting makes me have to do some stitches a little differently than you may have to do them. This is especially the case on this pattern because there are a lot of slip stitches and yarn overs. Just remember that you need to knit or purl into your stitches in a way that opens them up, not in a way that twists them tighter. Start by casting on 39 stitches. That sounds like a lot, but half of these stitches are used for the straps. On row 1, knit the first 5 stitches. Then bind off 10 stitches, being sure to leave 5 stitches on the right needle. Now knit the next 8 stitches. That gives you 5 stitches, a gap where stitches were bound off, and then 9 stitches. Leaving those 9 stitches on the right needle, bind off the next 10 stitches. Then knit the remaining 4 stitches. When you're finished with this row, you should have 19 stitches total in 3 groups. A group of 5, a group of 9, and another group of 5. When you pull these stitches together, you can see the straps start to form. 
There's a lot going on in row two. Start by purling the first five stitches. Then use the knit or cable cast on to add six stitches. Here's how to do that. Turn your work and knit into the first stitch on the left needle, but don't pull that stitch off. Instead, transfer the stitch on the right needle to the left needle by sticking the left needle through the back of the stitch. After casting on six stitches in this way, turn your work back so you can continue working row two. Now purl the next two stitches. Take your yarn to the back and hold it there while you slip the next five stitches from the left needle to the right needle. Stretch those slip stitches just slightly so that the yarn that's held in the back isn't tight at all. This yarn will be used to form the lacing type look on the front panel. Now bring the yarn back to the front and again be careful not to pull on that strand at the back. Then purl the next two stitches. Cast on another six stitches as you did before by turning your work and then knitting into each stitch and putting that knitted stitch back onto the left needle. And finally, purl the last five stitches. At the end of row two, you should have 31 stitches. On row three, we use the slip rib stitch to create the ribbing. You'll use this from here to row 18. Knit the first stitch. Now bring your yarn to the front and slip one stitch purl wise from the left needle to the right. Then take the yarn to the back again so you're ready to knit the next stitch. Continue this pattern of knitting one and slipping one with the yarn in front until you have 12 stitches on your right needle. Knit the next seven stitches on the front panel. Now slip the next stitch with the yarn in front and then knit the next stitch. Repeat this pattern to the end. So you're going to slip a stitch with the yarn in front and then knit the next stitch. On row four, purl the first 13 stitches. Then slip the next five stitches with the yarn in back. and then purl the last 13 stitches. Row five is like row three, 
but we're going to do the butterfly stitch in the middle of the front panel to tie the two loose strands together. So knit the first stitch and slip the next stitch with the yarn in front. Repeat that over the first 12 stitches. Then knit the next three stitches. And now we're going to do the butterfly stitch, which ties those two loose strands together. Here's how you do that. Slip your right needle under the two strands, knit into the stitch on the left needle, then pull that loop under the two strands, and now you should be ready to knit again. Knit the next three stitches. Bring the yarn forward and slip one stitch with the yarn in front. Then take the yarn to the back and knit, and repeat this pattern to the end of the row. On row 6, purl the first 13 stitches, slip the next 5 stitches with the yarn in back, being careful not to pull. and then purl the last 13 stitches. On row 7, knit one and slip one with the yarn in front for 12 stitches. Knit the next seven stitches. Slip one with the yarn in front and knit one and do that across to the end. On row 8, purl the first 13 stitches, slip the next 5 stitches with the yarn in back, being careful again not to pull that, and then purl the last 13 stitches. On row 9, we've got two strands, so we're ready to do the butterfly stitch on the front panel again. Knit one, and then slip one with the yarn in front for the first 12 stitches. Knit the next three stitches, do the butterfly stitch, and then knit three.
Now slip one with the yarn in front and then knit one, do that across to the end. On row 10, purl 13, slip 5 with the yarn in back, and purl 13. On row 11, knit one and slip one with the yarn in front. Do that for 12 stitches. And then knit the next 7 stitches. Now slip one with the yarn in front and then knit one and do that across to the end. On row 12, purl 13, slip 5 with the yarn in back and purl 13. On row 13, we've got two strands, so we're ready to do the butterfly stitch again. So knit one and slip one with the yarn in front. Do that for the first 12. Knit the next three stitches. Do the butterfly stitch and knit three. Now slip one with the yarn in front and knit one and do that across to the end. On row 14, purl 13, slip 5 with the yarn in back, and purl 13 again. On row 15, knit one and slip one with the yarn in front for 12 stitches. Knit the next 7 stitches. Then slip one with the yarn in front and knit one. Do that across to the end. On row 16, purl 13, slip 5 with the yarn in back and purl 13.
And on row 17, we've got two strands again, so we're ready to do the butterfly stitch for the last time. So knit one, and slip one with the yarn in front. Do that for 12 stitches. Knit the next three stitches, do the butterfly stitch, and knit three. Now slip one with the yarn in front and knit one and do that across to the end. Row 18 is the last row of the top, so you're just going to knit across on this row. And now we're finished with the top and we're ready to knit the tutu. You can continue knitting the tutu with the same yarn you used for the top. That's what I did on the dress that this hippo was wearing. Or you can switch to a different yarn here. And that's what I did on the dress that the bunny's wearing. If you use a super fine yarn with the same size of knitting needles, you get a shorter and lighter weight tutu that has a really airy, holy look. For the dress in this video, I'm using a yarn that's a lighter weight than what I used for the top. The dress that I knit for this bunny was done with a super fine yarn, but the yarn that I'm using today isn't quite that fine. On row 19, just knit across with the yarn you want to use for the tutu. On row 20, and all even rows, just purl across. On row 21 and all odd rows, the pattern is knit three and yarn over once. You'll repeat that pattern all the way across and then knit however many final stitches there are. It'll be either one, two, or three stitches. At the end of row 21, you should have 41 stitches. The yarn overs create larger holes which add to the tutu look. The yarn overs also add quite a few stitches to each row, and this makes the tutu have natural waves or ruffles. By the end, we have 221 stitches, and that can be hard to deal with on regular straight needles if you're using a heavier weight yarn. If that's the case, you may want to transfer your stitches to longer or circular needles as the number of stitches increases. I'll do a couple more rows here on this video so you can see how it starts to work up. 
On row 22, purl across. On row 23, we're on the right side, so knit three and yarn over once and do that pattern across to the end. At the end of the row 23, you should have 54 stitches. I'll stop recording here and come back to show you what to do on rows 34 and 35. So you can pause the video, just remember to purl on the wrong sides, and then do the knit three yarn over once pattern on the right sides. On row 25, you'll have 71 stitches. On row 27, you'll have 94 stitches. On row 29, you'll have 125 stitches. On row 31, you'll have 166 stitches. And on row 33, you'll have 221 stitches. Okay, we've finished knitting the tutu, and we're on row 34 and we're ready to knit the hem. So on row 34, just knit across. Row 35 is the last row, just bind off as you knit across this row. The great thing about this dress is that once you're done knitting, you're almost completely done. All you have to do now is sew one seam off the back and then weave in the ends. In sewing up the back seam, if I switch colors for the tutu, I like to sew the seam for the tutu with a tutu colored thread and then switch to the top colored thread when I get to that point. Then weave in and trim any remaining ends and you're done. If you're interested in making some ballet shoes, the hippo, or the bunny, check in the description for links to those patterns. I sell written versions of all these patterns, and I'm adding videos as fast as I can. Thanks for watching this video. Please like it and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when I release new videos. And don't forget to share a photo of your completed project on my Facebook page. See you next time.